guys, welcome to another tutorial. We're going to create procedurally created scrolling backgrounds using only a single texture image, image as an asset and all done without keyframes. That's amazing, at least I think so. So let's start by adding a background node and once done, uh, we'll change the uh, depth to float32, very important, don't forget that. And then we'll add a custom tool and after that we'll add a fast noise and add, pipe that into the custom tool, into the foreground. So let's display that. And in the custom tool, in the intermediate expression tab, let's add our first expression, get r2b open brackets x comma 0 0.5. So we're going to sample the fast noise across the, um, across the image at a fixed height of 0 0.5. Now, because of that reason, we can reduce the height to something like 50. We could even do it smaller, but then we could get some proxy issues. So let's stick to 50 for now. So let's type in our second expression on the channels tab of the custom tool. If open brackets y is smaller than i1, comma 1, comma 0, close brackets. And now we see our mountain appearing. And when we copy it over to the other channels, then we've got a complete white mountain with a transparent background. Let's have a look at what's happening in a separate composition. On the left hand side, you see a fast noise where the red box represents a single sample point along the X axis here at 0 0.25. As you can see, the brightness of the pixel is 0 0.45. On the right hand side, you see the output of the custom tool, where for the same point on the x-axis, so at 0 0.25, you see that the brightness of 0 0.45 is translated to a height of 0 0.45. The way this works is that the expression tells the custom tool to take the input image, i.e. the background tool, and make the pixel white, i.e. set all channels to 1, if for any given x value, in this example 0 0.25, the Y value is lower than the brightness, i.e. 0 0.45. For the other pixels, make it transparent. So you can see what's happening when we play around with the parameters, right? Brightness it will go up and down, and with the scale, everything changes accordingly. So this is basically how we start creating our background. So let's go back to our main work here and let's go back to the fast noise and play around with it a bit, right? So as we did in the other example, so we'll add some more detail. We change the scale somewhat, lower the brightness maybe, bit of contrast, doesn't really matter. Well, it doesn't matter, but it depends on what you want to go for. And then we add an expression because we want to make it move. So point, open brackets, Instead of the 0 0.5, we do minus time divided by 150, and the rest remains the same. And basically now, you see the thing will start scrolling, because the fast noise input is scrolling. And of course now we want to give some texture to it, so we drag in our texture image. I'm resizing it, it doesn't matter too much in this particular case, but I want to have a manageable uh, size. And I'm piping that into the custom tool. And also, very importantly, I had forgotten that the fast noise needs to be set to float 32 as well. And then in the intermediate tab, we'll type our third main expression, get r3w, open brackets, x, comma, y, close brackets. And let's copy that over and I quickly change the r to into a g and a b, respectively. And now we're going to use the uh, the intermediate expressions and basically update the formulas to refer to i2, i3 and i4 respectively. So that instead of showing a white pixel, it will show the pixel of the input. But of course, the input is not scrolling along with it, so we need to do something else. Multiple ways of doing this, but in this case we're going to add an expression in number in 1 minus time divided by 150. We could have linked it, of course, to the one over here, but I just retyped it in this particular case. So back to our expression, and then on the intermediate tab, we subtract the n1 from the x value, so that basically, once we've done that, you will see that the texture will scroll along with everything now. And now that looks neat. Uh, this is in principle fine. You may want to go for a look like this. Uh, I wanted it to look a bit differently, and I want the texture to sort of go up and down with the mountain, so I'm adding a minus i1 
to the y value so that basically it takes the uh, intermediate one output and subtracts that from the y value and then you get this nice result but play around with it right see uh, and, and, and see what look you like i'm just removing the transparent background for a bit and then i'm going to add a displace node and uh, just to make it look a bit more mountainy a bit more rocky so I'm adding a bit of light power and that should do for now. And then I'll add a little shadow note and then actually I need to remove the, uh, or get the checker underlay back in again so that I can see what's happening with the shadow. So with the shadow displayed, I can actually move the offset in the viewport like so. And then I'll add a bit of softness and that should do it for now. So we're done with our foreground mountain, but what about the parallax? and a background. Let's focus on that. Let's first add an optical flow. This will basically generate uh, vectors, right? So I'm not going into the detail there, consult a manual or check another tutorial, but it's needed for the next one, the time speed node that I just added, because I want to make use of the time speed and refer to the vectors. So we're based on the uh, flow interpolation mode and I need to clamp the edges to avoid artifacts. Very importantly, we need to slow down. So let's set it to 0 0.5 and let's delay it by 500 frames, right? Because we don't want that to be uh, completely in line with the foreground mountain. So add a bit of blur and then lower maybe the camera a bit as well. Uh, like so. And once we're done there, we can basically merge the two together. So um, let's move this one over to the right. Let's add a merge node and pipe the shadow into that and then the color corrector into that. But that's in the foreground and needs to be the other way around. So Ctrl T to swap it over. And there we go, we've got our background node and therefore we've got our parallax. You saw it in the video at the start, right? It's a bit it's a bit slow in rendering right now, but you see that the background node is moving slower. And that gives that sort of idea that it is further away. So let's add another merge because I want to add my background in, right? To make it look a bit more dramatic. So in this particular case, uh, I need to set the background properly to the background, right? So with a Ctrl T to, and then I'll set it to a gradient and we'll adjust the gradient to have something like uh, reddish type, red and yellow type background. So let's swap it over and let's change the first color to a type of red and then focus on the second one and we'll add some yellow orangey type color and that's looking pretty good. So we're done here, uh, but I want to add, just for illustration purposes, just the text in the middle that you saw in the example. So let's add a text plus node, and let's add some text as well, Mars attack, or whatever you like, of course. Let's quickly display the text one on viewport one. Uh, I want to change the font to something more Mars attacky, and this should do the trick, and of course increase it a bit to make it even more dramatic. It's an attack after all. Um, now we've done that, let's insert that in between there. So we really want to put it in front of the background. Right? So let's add a merge there in there. So after the sort of the parallax background, sorry, the parallax mountain, I should say, and let's put the text there so that it sits in between the two mountains or mountain ranges, uh, like so. Right? And then once we've done that, let's change the color as well of the text give it a bit of a red and yellow and such, uh, maybe yellow for the foreground and then for the background element. We can take the red outline preset, but set the appearance differently to full sort of font. And uh, we change the position and offset it a bit so that we get that sort of faux 3D effect. Uh, of course, you can get this a lot better, but I wanted to stick uh, to the basics here. Uh, it would be nice to put like a different texture in front of it, for instance. But as you can see, we're sort of there for the basic approach. So you have to do very little to make it look like this and make it look wavy. So let's do that. 
So the first thing I'm doing is to dial down the detail a bit to get a bit more of a smoother shape. And then I'm lowering the brightness to get the waves a bit lower, like so. And then uh, I also will apply a bit of a seeth ray to get some like, extra movement there. Right? It's subtle, but uh, it definitely makes a difference. Uh, next one up, in the custom tool, on the main numbers tab, I'm changing the expression to divide it by 300. This makes for a fairly subtle difference, but it basically means that the texture moves just a bit slower than the overall waves. Next one up is to add a bit of color correction. Well, color correction, we want to turn them blue. And we're going to be very unsubtle about it. So we're just going to add a color corrector and drag the slider to the left to get a bit of a blue effect. All right, maybe something like this. I'm also going to reduce the light power a bit in the displays because after all, it's not stone. And I'm just checking for reference in the original composition. And uh, basically, we're nearly there. Of course, the text uh, doesn't quite go. So first of all, I think we need to change the text itself. It's waves attacking rather than Mars. And then, of course, we need to change the colors to a bit of a bluey type theme. So let's do the foregrounds and the backgrounds to a bit of a different blue. Maybe something like this. Also, maybe jazz it up a, a bit with a bit of a texture. I've got here a sort of a paper texture from uh, Wild Textures. I use that source a, a lot. Now let's quickly resize it to normal HD resolution. And then I'm going to pipe it into the output of the text plus tool and that will create a merge. And then all I need to do is basically change the operator mode to in and the apply mode to screen. And there you get a bit of a papery type texture. Now, of course, we also want to change the uh, background color. So let's do that quickly and change it again to a bit of a more of a blue theme for both of them. There we go. And then we're pretty much done, maybe a tiny bit of tweaking. And yeah, based on this, I think the color of the text is a bit too dark, so let's brighten that up a tiny bit. And it's in the main shading element. Uh, yeah, maybe something like this. Again, it's not exactly the same as the example, but of course, you can change it to your liking. So yeah, this was pretty much all there was to it. So again, this tutorial was based or was aimed to give you an idea about how you can use a procedural way to create moving parallax backgrounds. So uh, these were simple examples, but you can make it as interesting and as cool as you would like it to be, of course. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.